Okay, here we go. Ooh. I have been in Hong Kong for four years and then I moved to Japan for three and then I came back for about three years. So seven years total and I have never been to Chung Chow. But I have heard the tales of street food. It's the jumbo fish ball. I see the potatoes. And pirates and people climbing mountains of buns and floating children parades. It sounds like I'm making that up, but I'm not. It's an interesting place and you're going. I'm going. We're all going. We're going to experience this together. We're merging. We're merging. It's definitely not for the claustrophobic. Let's get on the ferry. Chengchou is an island 10 kilometers southwest of Hong Kong Island. Its name translates to Long Island, but it's also nicknamed Dumbbell Island because of its shape. You can only get there by sea, so we took the ferry from Central. So the ticket was $24. We got the faster ferry. It takes 35 to 40 minutes to get there. Um, and it's really comfortable. Like the seats are nice and like plush. And we've got a TV in the front. I've got a view of a guy reading an interesting newspaper article. Then you have the, the harbor, of course. We're going to pass the skyline, which is going to be really beautiful. So there's a lot to look at along the way. impression is colorful and a lot of bikes. The reason why there's so many bikes here is because cars are actually not allowed anywhere on this island. So you can either walk or you can take a bike or you can take this sort of rickshaw looking thing which I think we're going to try a little later. broken up into two main sections. You have the south and the north. We're gonna start out at the south this morning. The north has a, oh, I'm gonna get run over. So we're gonna hit up the south, hit up two spots that I really wanna check out, and then we're gonna head to the north. I wonder who will get run over today. I have a feeling one of us. We're both filming and like focus on our subject. I've been here 15 minutes and I've almost got run over like three times. trying to shoot this scene without the fence. I think it looks nice. Okay. Got the houses and the palm trees and something back there. Oh. It's like those videos were the same, <laughs> same model. Photographer. No, different photographer, different photographer. Same model. Hello. As I was filming the flowers, I was approached by this man that was doing his morning stretches nearby and it seemed like he really wanted to show me something, so I followed him. I couldn't understand him, so I asked him if he could speak. <laughs> Chinese. I know that Yingman means English, I, don't, I just crumbled on the spot. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he wanted to show me this lizard on the tree and I got to talking to him and asking him if he'd been in Cheng Chow for a long time and he said he had lived there all of his life. He actually witnessed the Japanese invasion during World War II which was from 1941 to 1945. At that time his family lived on a boat in the sea and they had to be very careful of the air raids that were being done on the Japanese ships that were parked there. Since then, he has retired, he's moved into a village house, and life is much more relaxing. He said he likes to. <laughs> I have it yet. 
係啊，今日有隻即係一個職業喺嗰度。係咯。I couldn't help but notice a lot of the population there is older, but they are very strong and healthy. You see them stretching, walking, riding bikes, lifting things. Later on in the day, I actually started talking to someone about this, and she thinks that it's not due to their diet being much healthier in general. She thinks it's due to their exercise. So since no cars are allowed on the island, everyone walks and、uh, rides bikes because they have no other choice. In fact, studies show that elderly who exercise for three hours per week end up living five years longer than those who don't. And Hong Kong topped the annual longevity list this year. They have for the past three years. People think this is because of lower smoking rates, a subtropical climate, a diet higher in seafood, close family ties, and a lot of walking. We've now come to Chung Po Zai Cave, and legend has it he was one of the most fierce pirates in Asia. He actually inspired the Pirates of the Caribbean character Sao Feng. He's known to have hid his treasures amongst Hong Kong's islands, and this was one of his favorite spots. I don't know if it's actually his favorite. But... <laughs> Hi, today I'm going to show you my favorite spot. We're joining this crew. Wow, so narrow. <laughs> really dark. <laughs> okay. See you some. See you some. Thank you. Start here, and there's a ladder here. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow, this looks like a concert. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Is there any signs of treasure? <laughs> oh, maybe don't walk on that. <laughs> wow, this is cool. So tight in here. It's definitely not for the claustrophobic. I found something. Look at this. It's so small. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, I made it. Thank you. Oh. How can I? Oh, oh, okay. I'll just slide. Okay. <laughs> Today I learned that cave exploring is not for me. Not for me. <laughs> All right. Good work, team. It sounds so nice right now. Like the water, the birds chirping. It's quite peaceful here. And there's like nobody in sight. Spot is called Sidan, which translates to like whatever. I heard it's pretty good though. Hopefully the food is not whatever. Slow cooked Canadian moisturized. <laughs> Literally me right now. First we have the truffle scrambled egg on hash browns. Creamy, delicate, soft. It's got the truffle flavor and the crispy hash browns. I have to say, during COVID, I've become a potato and egg connoisseur. I've made so many in my kitchen, so this is like the match made in heaven for me. Great.
One of the most popular shops on this island is Island Workbench. So they feature a lot of Hong Kong artists and some products are actually made here in Chung Chow by Chung Chow artists. Okay. Coffee time, we're going to Valora Coffee. They have some very nice, delicious, but also Instagrammable coffee. They're famous for this one inside of a coconut, so that's the one that I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, let's go in. <laughs> oh, your coconut one is sold out. Oh no. Which one would you recommend? I went for their pineapple coffee. It's served in a copper pineapple. And I think there is pineapple juice inside. Yeah, there is a little bit of pineapple juice inside. It's really nice. Hmm, there's no milk or anything, but it's, um, it gives the coffee a little bit more of a fruity flavor. Officially feels like I'm on vacation. <laughs> Mango mochi, please. One? Just one, please. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so this right here is Chung Chow's famous mango mochi. It's about double the size of a regular mochi, so it's quite large. Oh my gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. The skin is super thin and delicate and soft. And then there's a big, thick, sweet piece of mango inside. So nice. Hey, I found a frozen watermelon slice as big as my head and I had to try it. Tastes like a watermelon. <laughs> That's been frozen. Thank you. It's not that sweet though. I think it's off season. Mm. Uh, yeah, Chung Chow is known for its fishing and its fresh seafood. So a lot of fishermen will bring in their catch of the day and you can buy it straight off the boat and then come to these restaurants and they'll cook it for you. Or you can also just buy the seafood from these restaurants. It's also very fresh. But yeah, a lot of people come here to eat seafood. takes place for the bun festival but unfortunately they're not doing it this year uh, they haven't done it for the past couple of years but yeah this is where it would be held hopefully in the near future it'll happen again and they are the bakery responsible for making all of the buns for the festival. They actually have to make 50,000 of them. Basically what it is, is a cold bun made out of wheat and it has a sweet filling on the inside and they are a symbol of peace. So that character is the one that's stamped on top of the bun. Jumbo fish balls. 
they have the jumbo fish balls. This is an iconic Hong Kong snack. It's a fish ball. Chung Chow does them extra large, and this is the spicy one. So I broke it a little to let some heat escape, and then can go in. It's okay, the spice is not too strong. Definitely bouncy, a little bit sweet almost, the, the fish meat. It's, it's really nice. Ooh, juicy. I rode a bike, I fell off. When I was 13, 14, and then I never got back on. It's been that long. Yeah, it's been that long. I'm not sitting in the back. <laughs> it's a tricycle. Oh, yep, the brakes work. Okay, here we go. Oh. Uh, <laughs> can I turn? Uh. <laughs> All right. Wanna ride? <laughs> <laughs> Some, there's a passenger in the back already. <laughs> That's my audience. We're merging, we're merging. <laughs> oh, we have a bell. Woo! We have a bell. Whenever I see someone and I look at them, then I go into them. Don't look. Don't look at them. Go, look straight. Look straight. Look straight. Oh, gosh. Signal. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even capture how chaotic <laughs> Of our day trip to Chung Chow. I really enjoyed it. We ate a lot of great food in total. I think we spent about a hundred Hong Kong dollars, which is under ten dollars US, uh, for all of those snacks, which were really tasty. I love the colorful buildings. I love the fact that cars aren't allowed, so you can walk, you can ride bikes, and you can actually walk the whole island is quite small so that's pretty cool how you can explore and I, I love the way it feels very community like a big family everyone's a part of this community it's really chill and uh, I really enjoy the day I hope you enjoyed watching and coming along with us I will catch you very soon with another video bye